and welcome to Nancy's Neighborhood, folks, and it's great to be back with you. You know, between the holidays and the snow days and everything that's going on, I kind of feel like I've not been here very often, but but we've had some good shows, and uh, and I do want to apologize, some of you all, uh, last week's show, the very first time it showed, had no sound. There were four people, actually three people at a time, up here talking. Our mouths were moving, but there was no sound. But we got that fixed, so hopefully everything was okay for the rest of the week. Uh, today I want to tell you about some things that are happening in Cleveland and Bradley County. And, and I want to do also at a while in Polk County and some of Hamilton County because we're not always, I mean, we're not only on Charter, but we're also on Comcast. And I'm told rabbit ears, and so there's other ways to pick up this show. So I want to be sure we include all those areas when I make my announcements. And the very first thing I want to do is welcome Ralph Baldwin to Cleveland. Ralph is coming in as the new publisher of the Cleveland Daily Banner. Ralph's been in the newspaper business for a long, long time. He's a former tennis friend of mine. He's still a friend of mine, but he's former tennis. I don't play anymore, but, but I think Ralph still does. And uh, he comes to us from Greenville, Tennessee. He was actually at one time at the Daily Post Athenian in Athens. And so we're thrilled to have him here. And he'll be stepping into some big shoes that Stephen Crass is leaving behind. Stephen's been at the Banner for 16 years, been in the newspaper business a lot longer than that. And uh, Stephen's going to retire. Stephen's a golfer and a fisherman, and I think he's probably going to enjoy retirement. I believe they're doing a little renovating at their house. So I think Deb's probably going to keep him pretty busy because I've already asked her how she's going to handle retirement. She said she has a whole lot of little honeydews for him to do. So, so welcome, Ralph and Stephen. We've enjoyed having you here. And he's not leaving Cleveland, folks. He's, he's here for a while. So, uh, so, but anyway, I'm hoping to have Ralph on with me in uh, next couple of shows. Uh, I've already told him he has to come here and be on with me. So he said, okay, he would. Now, Bradley County nears being a healthier community, and this is a wonderful time of the year for us to do that, and hopefully I can have somebody on later on to explain this to us, but this is a good time at the first of the year to make your, your New Year's resolution to be healthier, and so uh, right now is a great time to do it. I want to congratulate Matt Jenny and Bo Burris. They're going to be heading up a new bank in Cleveland, Smart Bank, and I need to try to get one of them on to tell us about the new bank that's coming to town. Uh, Andrew Hunt from the library will be on with me in the next show to tell you everything that's going on at the library. And folks, remember, the library is free. So please, please utilize that facility. Uh, Chattanooga artist Charlie Newton has an art exhibit called Shades at the Athens Area Council for the Arts. And for more information on that, you can call them, 423-745-8781, or go to AthensArtsCouncil.org. A soapbox that I love to get on is the fact that we don't have an arts center here in Cleveland, Bradley County. Athens does. This one, if you ever, if you grew up in Athens, were ever familiar with Athens at all several years ago, uh, the Sue Trotter Black Box Theater and the Athens Arts Council uh, building are what used to be the old Harrods grocery store on White Street. So this is, this is a great facility, folks. Probably seats I've been to several concerts there at the Black Box. It probably seats 150 people. So give them a call if you're interested. Also, the Bradley High School class of 1977 is planning a 40-year reunion. It's going to be held April 29th at the Coffee Barn. And so far, all I've been able to find out about it is that you can contact the class through a P.O. Box 535 in Cleveland Post Office 37364. Uh, I'm sure there's somebody's phone. If you graduated in 77, or your spouse graduated in 77, uh, see who you need to contact about that. I'll try to find out more information for you. Now, the museum has, uh, they have the College Hill exhibit going on right now, and then they also have uh, Grown and Bread in East Tennessee going on right now, and uh, that exhibit will be there for a couple of months. Museum membership, folks, for a single membership is $30. And then you get to benefit. They had a member's reception before this. They have a member's reception before a lot of the events they have there, a lot of the exhibits that come in. So for $30, you can be an individual member or there are family members and other memberships that you can do. So you might want to contact the museum and about becoming a member. Now, the Etowah Arts Commission is going to present an art exhibit by Claudia Walker from January the 12th through March 31st and it's called Everything Country, and Claudia is a Sweetwater native, 
and she feels that Tennessee has proven to be a source of great inspiration for her artwork. Now, there's an artist reception for her on the 26th of January from 5.30 to 7. Now, this, their art center there is located in the old drugstore on Tennessee Avenue next door to the gym theater, which here again, Etta Wall's got an art center, and we don't, and I don't understand this. But anyway, the phone number there is 423-263-7608, or you can visit www.ettawallarts.org. I hope some of you got to Birchwood for the Sand Hill Crane and Bald Eagle ex exhibition that TWR TWRA did. Um, it's a great event, folks. Um, I don't go because I, I, most of you know I live over on the river, so I can sit on my deck and watch the cranes come in. They come in and light on the sandbar just right out off my dock, and the bald, eag bald eagles feed there just about every day. So I, I don't go over to Birchwood, but that's not to say it's wonderful. Uh, this was last weekend, so I hope a lot of you got over there because it's a super event, and uh, TWRA helps with that, and, and they're great guys. In fact, I met two of them in Nashville this past weekend when I was over there for a school board. Two of them were elected to school boards in the state of Tennessee, um, different cities, and uh, I bragged on them then and told them how great I thought TWRA was. Uh, you don't appreciate them unless you live on the water, and then you really do appreciate them. Uh, the book and coffee series that's held at the museum, I, I'm sorry, at the library, and it's at the history branch of the library at 10 o'clock this Friday, January the 20th. Now, the book they're going to review this month is by a local artist, Ariette Grimmett, and the book is Our Judeo-Christian Principles Are Under Attack. And it says it's not necessary for you to read the book. You can just come for the social hour and the coffee, and the, and the author will be there to talk about her book. Now, foster grandparents are needed for Bradley County Head Start classrooms, and they're seeking individuals 44 years old and older to come into the schools and work with the children. You just need to have a love for children and, and an ability to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. They'd like to have you for 20 hours a week, but I'm sure they'll take you for whatever time they can get you. And you need to call Susan Knoll at 423-643-6418 to find out about this program. And I will tell you, I have been to the Head Start Center and have read to the students. And what was really funny is they told me I had 30 minutes to read to three-year-olds. Well, any of you all that have a three-year-old, have been around a three-year-old, or know about three-year-olds, 30 minutes is entirely too long to try to read to a three-year-old. I think I may have read five minutes. I read two books. And by that time, we had the ants in the pants, and we were just really, really not going to listen to Miss Nancy any longer, and that was fine. So, so whatever time you can give to this program would be absolutely awesome. And also, folks, this is the 100th anniversary of Girl Scout cookies. Now, I remember growing up in Athens selling Girl Scout cookies. I remember now eating Girl Scout cookies, and they are wonderful. I love the Thin Mints, and the reason I love the Thin Mints is you can put them in the freezer and freeze them and then just pull them out one at a time if you want to to eat. Um, there are nearly $800 million in cookie sales is, gener is generated in an average season. Now, folks, that's a lot of cookies. And 100% of the money stays in the local council and troops. There's only f over 40 million households purchase cookies each year. I hope you're one of those households. And the cookies are on sale now. So if you see a Girl Scout selling cookies, be sure you buy from her. And they are delicious. I mean, they have the Samoas and they have some other things. They had these lemon cookies, I think it was last year, that had this uh, confectioner sugar. Uh, oh, they were so good. So I think I've tried them all. And uh, the Girl Scout Council of the Appalachians is 10,000 girls strong with uh, their volunteers, and they're in 46 counties in the Knoxville, Chattanooga, and Tri-Cities area, which means they also have the Cleveland area, the Cleveland Scouting. So if you don't see the Girl Scouts out selling the cookies, uh, go to this website, www girl scout csa.org that's scout not scout scout girl scout csa.org and see if there's a list on there of where you can find the cookies but i'm sure that you'll see them out in front of stores and everything so be sure that you stop and and purchase a box of cookies the red shoe gala for the, for casa is planned for february 4th it begins at six o'clock at the museum center and this is a fundraiser for court appointed special advocates now, we have more than 1,300 children per year involved in the court system in Bradley and Polk County. Now, that's an astounding number, folks. 1,300 kids 
in Bradley and Polk County that are involved in our court system. And so we need to support these kids. We need to be sure that they have special advocates with them in the courtroom. Uh, you can imagine if you're in court against a parent, um, how intimidating that could be. So we need to be sure we support CASA. And the tickets for the gala are available at www.casabp.org or you can call 472-5800. And then the very last announcement I have for you today is that January 24th at 7.30 at Pangle Hall, Susanna Beeler Ness will be in concert and she is an operatic trained soprano, uh, beautiful, beautiful voice. Uh, her family are neighbors of mine over on the river. It should be a wonderful concert. The tickets are $15 for adults and $5 for seniors and children. And for more info, you can call this Lee U number, 614-8343. And the box office is open on weekdays from 3 to 6. And this concert will be at Pangle Hall on January 14th at 730. And I want to tell you that I've got Josh over there on all the little apparatuses that is t that's taping the show today because Bryce is at a convention in Orlando, Florida, or that's what he told us, so we hope that's what he's doing. And so I want to thank Josh for coming in today, and he will be producing the show today. So we hope we have no snafus. We hope he doesn't cut my head off or anything like that. And so don't go away, folks. I'll be right back with my guest, and be sure you watch our commercials because these people pay the bills, and we want you to go out and support them. So don't go away. I'll be right back. <laughs> 